Um, good morning and good afternoon from wherever you are. I uh, will just I'd like to remind you this webinar is brought to you by MRCCTU at uh, University College of London and the Global Health Network, uh, University of Oxford. Um, and just again to remind you, today's webinar is about how to be a good data manager. Uh, we are joined by uh, a number of panelists from uh, Vietnam, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, and UK. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared on the Global Health uh, Network. Uh, then secondly, to automatically translate the speech to, sub to subtitles in your chosen language, navigate to the closed captions functions and select your language. It's at the bottom. Uh, then due to the number of participants, your video and microphone have been disabled. They will be enabled later during the queue. And please, please use the chat function to introduce yourself or to report any technical issues. Uh, please use also the Q&A function to post your questions and comments. Uh, you may do so anonymously. On the slide is a presentation of the number of people who have registered uh, from the different um, uh, countries and regions. As you can see, we have a number from UK, from Uganda, from Italy, from Nigeria. So those are the number of people uh, from the different regions that have registered for today's uh, webinar. However, uh, more have, have registered and have joined. So uh, on the uh, panel, uh, uh, on the panel, like I said, we have a number of uh, panelists, uh, including Anne, uh, Shungrai, uh, Nisrek, and Alex. I'll give these pro I'll give their profiles as uh, they get to their presentations. Once again, I'm, I'm Ayub Kakan, the head of data management and archives at the MRC VRI and uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in Uganda. So I think we can now get started with the first uh, presentation by Anne. Um, Dang is an accomplished biostatistician and data scientist with over 12 years of dedicated experience in clinical research, specializing in infectious diseases with a background in data management and statistical analysis. Dang has made contributions to advancing the outstanding of uh, antimicrobial resistance and infectious disease within Oxford University Clinical Research Unit, Vietnam. Uh, Throughout uh, his career, Dang has excelled in applying statistical methodologies to complex clinical data, ensuring uh, the integrity and accuracy of research findings. He plays a pivotal role in designing studies, analyzing data, and interpreting results that drive critical medical insight and innovations. Dang's experience extends to managing large data sets, developing data collection protocols, and utilizing statistical software to develop actionable results. He is very well known for his attention to, uh, to detail and ability to communicate complex statistical concepts to diverse audiences. Let's welcome him as he gives us his presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lung. I'm uh, a biostatistician and data scientist uh, at the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit, we call OCRU in, in Vietnam, in Hanoi, Vietnam. I have been working. Uh, in uh, several years in rows of um, uh, data management task, supporting my analyst work. In uh, at Acru, we uh, conduct uh, conduct research in areas like um, the clinical research, AMR surveillance community, AMR and uh, the antibiotic stewardship. And uh, we gather data from uh, various uh, sources, including the data from hospitals, from the health centers, from CRF, and also from the online surveys and questionnaires. And my daily uh, responsibilities, including um, uh, designing the data collection forms on uh, RedCap or on other tools, we have we also have an in-house tool named Clearest to collect the data from the uh, patients. I also need to ensure the data from site uh make it make sure it uh, is usable and complete also i get the uh, i provide the, the the data uh and uh the code book for researchers i also uh, manage the access permission for each data set and uh, i also 
provide uh, produce some uh, data reporting by weekly or monthly to to researchers they to help them see the data collection uh, situation and of course i do uh, most of the data analysis uh, for for our crew as my my main job so um, in uh, my work, I face uh, several challenges. Uh, first of all, the the ensuring data quality and uh, completeness requires a regular check and discussions. It is uh, like uh, a spiral task. I or our colleagues, uh, we give the data requirement to to the hospitals, to the partners, and uh, we we support the them. Uh, to extract the data and we then we check the data and give the feedback after some uh, data checking and uh, uh, we do that uh, loop again uh, if we have uh, the problem in the data to get the, uh, a better data set also the um, a big challenge is also the data inter uh, integration because uh, we have uh, data from different uh, source different sites and um, is uh, the standardizing data from them is tricky due to very varying systems, uh, especially with the frequent change in the hospital information system. So we uh, in, in Vietnam we are still uh, new in the beginning period of that. So the hospitals uh, frequently change the, their his hospital information system. So it's hard to to even to 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 merge the, to combine the data file between uh, of one hospital between years and years, so also the data and variables and codes are in a special a specific format and that is not always easy to have an explained codebook from the the site the partners, um, and uh, as I'm not uh, formally trained in the data management. Uh, I mostly I am biostatistician, so the 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 applying the the ZCP the the ZDPR and also the other Vietnam's uh, data regulations is smoothly in is quite challenging and uh, it needs I need uh, it requires continuous learning for me. Um, also, the data security and privacy are, are tough. Uh, particularly with the data store in the um, file in our file servers, and uh, also our clinical trial unit, uh, they they separate raw um, uh, data for their own purpose. So uh, for some data, I still cannot uh, have the permission to 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 manage the data. <laughs> so also in um, the the partner or the sites, they, they often they resist to encrypt the data due to some effort involved. So we we lead the, to the insecure insecure data transfer. For example, they do not encrypt the, the data and uh, they send data in an unsecure way because they don't have time. Uh, so sometimes uh, we I receive the data via some an instant message app with the full uh, information of the patient. So and uh, one more thing is about the the handling uh, the large volume of data and the learning uh, new technologies also my one of my difficulties. So in Vietnam, so most of program uh, has difficulty with the huge um, huge uh, CSV file uh, because in our CSV file we have a lot of special characters and the Vietnamese accent, so it's difficult to read uh, in one time. With the huge file, it takes time, and sometimes we lose data, and or, or the program cannot read correctly the data. Also, the managing time, the budget, and uh, the personnel for my uh, small data team is also demanding. We lack up, uh, some SOP for the data management, mm. and uh, some uh, so that leads to uh, the analysis. Sometimes is is duplicated. Mm, uh, because we sometimes we redo the task without without knowing that task was done by another college. We don't know. We it's, somehow it's difficult to to share the information uh, immediately. 
and uh, to um, to overcome the the um, the challenges, I I I focus I focus first uh on clear and regular communication with my team, with my colleagues, and also partners to quickly resolve the the data issues, and uh, we need to avoid the uh, procrastination. That's very important. So, um, also I'm uh, also testing a resource sharing hub for for my team, uh, for my data team. So in our data team, we can share our resources with using some 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 tags, so we can the other in my team can easily find and use the uh, existing resources. Uh, and and also we hold regular technical meetings for for mutual support in our group, and and also in the recently the AI tools is uh quite helpful. Uh, like it is helpful for drafting a plan, for like a plan data management plan, for example, and perform. It help me do it very quickly for a mass research, mass search, or uh, streamlining the many tasks. So I think we can apply the AI and AI soon for a lot of uh, our uh, daily task. And uh, one more thing is um, is uh. We I I give some uh, quickly quick training for our research assistant and coordinator because they are the person who work uh, regularly with the side with the partners, so uh, they I I train them how to use some some tool some uh, some commercial tool or some in house tool for data checking and reporting. They also learn some minimum data requirement and. So they work more effectively with partners. Uh, so that uh, reduce my workload, of, of course. And finally, I am working on an in-house uh, data hub for better data management, control, and uh, audit trail. So we put everything on uh, the data on a chapter database. Uh, even we have the existing data, we import them in a chapter database, and we can. Uh, follow we can control who access to this data who correct the data so it's much better than a file server so that's a brief of my of overview of my work as a data manager and uh, in a research uh, clinical research unit uh, thank you for listening listening and i welcome your comments and questions thank you uh thank you Anne. um just remain uh uh, the report attending will have a panel discussion at the end after the panelists. But um, as we go on, if you have any question, there is a Q and A at the bottom uh, section. Please make use of it. Um, we'll we'll uh we'll be answering as we continue, and we'll also have also a session at the end. But we'll have a panel discussion at the end. Uh, thank you again, and we'll move on to the next panelist, uh, Shinrai Chimnen. And um, he's a dedicated data capturer and uh, quality assurance and uh, QC officer committed to meticulous data management and excellence in health care research. She began her research career working on studies related to TB and heart failure, where she recognized the significance of accurate data collection and analysis in addressing critical health challenges, things that we've been doing, uh, but she's taken them a step further. As a data capturer, she's, uh, she played a pivotal role in ensuring the integrity and reliability of research data in these areas, leveraging her attention to detail and, the commit and commitment to protocol adherence, something that's very critical. Uh, she's expanded her, her horizons. She's took opportunities to contribute to studies in HIV, COVID, and respiratory virus. Uh, her role as a data capturer and key office officer allowed her to maintain high standards of data integrity, ensuring that the findings were robust and reliable. She remains committed to leveraging her skills and expertise to research initiatives and has the ability to uh, and potential to improve potential outcomes and inform public health policies. Welcome, Shina. Thank you for very much for having me. Uh, I would like to start by thanking um, MRC. Uh, for inviting me to present uh, on behalf of ECF and uh, the data team, the site. Um, our working as a 
data capturer and um, uh, working with management closely has allowed us to, uh, to, 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 to know the significance of research. Uh, it also has allowed us to, to, to realize that uh, data is very important uh, and hence it needs to be reported accurately and uh, timelessly. This is because um, we are dealing with uh, different data and we are dealing with, uh, with people and uh, this has, um, this, this has allowed us to, 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 to realize the, the significance of uh, reporting data in, um, in an accurate and correct manner. Uh, working as a, as a data capturer as well, because that's when I started uh, as a data capturer, uh, you, you will learn to know that um, data needs to be kept very confidential. It needs to be very safe and needs to be very clear so that everyone can understand it. Otherwise, um, people won't be understanding what we are dealing with. Working uh, also in data allows us to work together and uh, it also allows us to, 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 to keep on learning so that you know um, uh, what data is about in, in clinical research. Um, that will be my experience that I have working in data and uh, working as a QA QC. Uh, we also tend to face a lot of challenges, but not that we cannot overcome them. We always have find ways to overcome challenges. Um, in clinical research, there will be, it, it tends to be overwhelming. Mm, this is because we, you'll have many different protocols to deal with on a daily basis. Um, if you lack the strong communication and the teamwork that you should have as a QA, because you need to communicate so that people know where exactly they are lacking or where they need to improve or what needs to be done uh, in different protocols. If you lack that, then reporting uh, clinical data will be a, a failure. Um, we also have a challenge of handling uh, of mastering different protocols. That is a, a big challenge in, in, in QA because all the protocols are different and they require different, um, different rules and regulations, uh, different reporting timelines and so on. Yes, thank you, Ayob, for the challenges. I will move on to the top tips that I can share. Um, basically, the top tips that uh, I can share in, in data will be um, planning. Planning is uh, in data is when we, we have our meetings and um, you take ideas from the team members so that you uh, uh, you discuss and, and 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 find ways to 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 improve data reporting. Um, the other top tip that I can have is uh, knowing your data and always following what the protocol entails. Always refer back to what uh, how the protocol needs to, 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 how you need to, to run the, the, the study using the protocol and uh, using site SOPs as well. Uh, and also remember that in research, if it's not, uh, if, if, if uh, you always need to know where uh, data is coming from, you need to, so that it, you can always refer back so that people can understand data. That would be all for me, Ayob. Thank you, much appreciated for your experiences and uh, the tips. Um, and uh, just a quick reminder before we go to the next presenter, uh, we'll have um, a panel discussion at the end.
we have the Q and A uh, at the bottom. People can use it uh, to ask questions, and these are being uh, some of them are being responded to, while some will respond to them uh, as a session after the presentations by the panelists. For now, we're still getting presentations from the panelists. Uh, so the next presenter is uh, Michelle Ferry, and uh, who studied uh, computer studies and management information systems. He's been working in clinical data management for over 20 years, and that comes with a lot of experience, and has worked on more than 14 protocols and 17 sub-studies. He has used more than 15 different database platforms. He started, he started as a data manager for a single study in 2004, and eventually worked on multiple studies as a data manager. Let's get his experiences, I have tips, and then, yeah. Good day, everyone. My name is Mishek, and I work for the University of Cuba uh, Research Center. Thanks, Katande, for introducing me to the team. My experience over years has taught me that data is the product of any clinical research setup. Data lasts and will live forever. My second point is on understanding the data um, management requirements of any study that you're working on, you need to develop some SOPs that will guide you and also follow the guidelines from the sponsor and the site guidelines. In any setup, communication is key. Intra-communication, communication within departments and communication with any data stakeholders is key to a good data management. Management of time is also very important in any setup. The data manager should be proactive, start early and always think ahead in terms of data delivery. Data management is supposed to save time, not to occupy time. <clears throat> the data manager should always try to capacitate his team and make sure your absence from the site does not affect the flow of data, does not affect the functions of any activities that needs to be um, done within your site. Remember, always remember that data management is the gatekeeper and data management is also the custodian of data within a setup. Data management, should always try to um, provide the key guidance to the data collectors as well. I'll move on to the challenges. The listed are some of the challenges that I've come through during my um, days, during my period working in data management. Database upgrade delay causes backlogs within um, a trial. Data upgrade delays also uh, causes inconsistencies because this will ask you to um, work on data retrospectively. And working on data retrospectively is uh, delays um, attending to queries. Most studies come with already designed databases and they don't involve the end user who are the data management team in designing, but some do. You only come to realize that there are a lot of issues or bugs with the database when you start data capturing. And this will also create backlogs where you have to put some uh, folders or some data into the suspense until the upgrade or the correction or the rectification of that bug in the database is attended to. There are some queries that take long to resolve. And there are a lot of reasons that cause these queries to take a lot of time to resolve. Some are due to scant information collected by the data collectors. Some are due to uh, information that are unable to, unable to be captured in the, in the system and uh, you go on and so on and so forth. And the clinicians handwriting, I, I think a lot of people who work in the data management will agree that we most much of the time we have to visit 
uh, our friend Google to understand some of the words that will be written or oh, wait for the data collector to come and explain what that word means. And most of us in the data management are not as clinical as data um, collectors. Meeting timelines is a big challenge at times. This is due to some, um, <clears throat> some activities that may will be taking place, for instance, IDMC. You work extra, you work around the clock to make sure that all the data that is needed is, in, is, is captured in time and it also trying as much as you can not to compromise the quality of data because you've got to meet timelines. If timelines are, uh, if you cannot uh, meet timelines, communication is key, everything. I'm now going to talk on the top tips that I would want to share with everyone. Yeah. A good data manager should be able should have the ability to organize. Organization makes everything simple and workable. Organize everything at the beginning and avoid waiting until things have descended into chaos. Chaos can be very difficult to rectify or correct. Work with priorities. Prioritizing your work will make everything flow smoothly. See what should be done first and what needs to be done later. A good data manager should be able to work within time frames, although it's very difficult, as I've mentioned before. But you always have try as much as you can and make sure there is communication if time frames cannot be met. Always work with the work plan. Things should not be done randomly. There should always be a work plan and avoid, uh, reduce the need to go back and fill in the gaps or organize everything. As it is said uh, in, the, in the engineering sector that so many gears are turned by one chain. Some turn three times, some twice and some once, but all to turn the engine and make it run. As it is also known in the jurist uh, old adage that anything that is not written down did not happen. So document, document it, and documentation is very important. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Much um, appreciated. And uh, uh, for that insight, uh, it gives a good insight on uh, your data management experience. Uh, we'll move on to Alex, and then we'll go into the panel discussion. So uh, Alex studied uh, uh, Bachelor of Sciences in Biological Sciences at Troyo Veterinary College, where she developed a keen interest in epidemiology and the transmission of infectious diseases. She went on to complete a master's in control of infectious disease at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, where she included a research project involving field work in Ghana. Following this, she started working as a data manager at the MRCCTU at uh, University College of London in January 2023, and has worked on both uh, the Breather Plus and the latter uh, trials, which are exploring different treatment options for adolescents living with HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, in this role, she is responsible for all data management tasks for these studies, including raising queries and generating reports um, to help with data cleaning and updating worksheets and ECRFs to facilitate data collection and liaising with the data managers at the various trial sites. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, I, um, and yeah, hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, Working as a data manager on LATA, so I'll just quickly introduce the trial that I work on. So LATA is an open label, randomized clinical trial taking place in five sites across Uganda, Kenya, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. The trial aims to find out whether taking long acting injectable medicines every eight weeks is as effective and safe as taking tablet HIV medicine every day. 
and 470 HIV positive adolescents aged 12 to 19 were recruited between April last year and April this year. Um, and UCL is the sponsor for LATA. So, and, and just to um, explain, this is slightly different to the role of data managers working at sites, as you've seen in some of the previous presentations, because instead I'm working at a trial coordinating site. Um, in the next slide, I'll take you through some of my regular tasks as a DM. So um, some of my daily tasks may involve uh, collating and sending database reports to the site to help with data cleaning and um, help with completeness. And, you know, we might be, you know, uh, some of the things we'll chase for are like missing forms, missed visits, and any like, outstanding queries currently assigned to any of the site team members on the database etc um i also raise stats queries on the database the stats will give us a list of queries um and then as data manager will raise them and then i'll also review those any responses to those queries to see if they can be closed out or if they need further discussion um i also generate monthly central monitoring reports uh, that we then review as a trial team to see if there's any actions that need to arise from them again looking at things like data return rate like missing forms missed visits etc um <clears throat> i'm also involved in writing and reviewing uh, a lot of the trial documentation for example the dmp data ma um management plan and <clears throat> monitoring report sometimes the protocol if that's being updated to look at the data related uh, sections. And then I'm also involved in developing and reviewing uh, worksheets in ECRF. Sometimes um, we're releasing new ones if we're uh, releasing the database in stages. And sometimes we'll notice that some questions need to be altered. And yeah, I'm involved in testing those and making sure that they're ready for release. Um, also maintain an ETMF, so that's just uploading uh, all trial documentation to online TMF. Um, I also develop um, deliver data management training to sites, um, <clears throat> and this can this also involves we have we hold like monthly data management calls um, with the DMs at each site, and you know that's a chance for us to chase up with them any um outstanding queries and deliver any training on any <clears throat> new materials but then it's also a chance for them to ask us questions um and that we can uh, resolve for them then which and that's been really useful um <clears throat> and then also just yeah communicating with site and responding to their <clears throat> any queries they may have um and then also um in my role i'm in yeah, I'm sort of in charge of processing any adverse events that come in as well. Um, and just wanted to note that even within the clinical trials unit that I work in, the data manager role is really different depending on what trial you work on. So, yeah, I thought that was worth noting. Um, so challenges. Um, there is so much to learn. And especially when you start as well, it can feel a bit overwhelming because there is just so many acronyms and stuff to get your head around and remember. Um, but I would say the best way to get around this is just ask questions, like ask so many questions. Um, even if you, you, you know, if, if there's something that you really don't get, don't be afraid to keep on asking that question. And the best thing is experience. Um, like it really does, you know, it really does come with um, the more, the more time you've been in the role, the, the better you'll start remembering things so yeah don't don't feel too um overwhelmed at first because it'll come with time um also working practices um it's always good to develop working practices um especially to help you but also if there's any new dm starting i'll find them really useful um for any processes that you do um Timely responses to site queries as well. So especially in LATA, we can get some quite urgent ones come in in the mailbox, you know, especially if it's related to safety or eligibility or injection scheduling for LATA. Um, and yeah, um, just um, making sure that you know the right person to um, contact regarding those queries. For example, the study clinician or statistician and, 
yeah, just getting those um, resolved as quickly as possible because often the participant is in clinic. So yeah. <laughs> um, also there's some more complex queries. And again, it's just good to know which um, person in the trial team you want, you need to contact in order to resolve those queries as clearly and timely as possible. Um, also um, managing varying workloads. So because obviously these trials are like happening in real time, you'll, you'll get some weeks that are really, really busy and some that are slightly quieter. And the best way to deal with this is to balance your workload with the uh, trial manager. I found like, uh, and that works both ways. So if it's really busy, uh, like, you know, you've got loads of queries and stuff, like it's helpful to share that with them, but then also vice versa. If, you know, you've got a little bit of spare time, you know, it's good to help out on some of those trial management tasks. So yeah, it's good to have a good collaborative teamwork uh, approach to that. Um, the last point I just wanted to raise about you know potential challenge or something to overcome there's some stats queries that don't need to be raised um and again this sort of comes with experience but you know the pro stats programs are really good but they're not like faultless and sometimes you just need to sense check when a query sort of gets raised to you by stats it's like do i need to raise this in the database or do i know something like that means that it actually doesn't make sense and then you can sort of go back to stats and be like oh, this happened and, you know, tell them to suppress it for next week. But yeah, again, sort of comes with experience and just I think it's really good to know the trial as well as you possibly can. And then that should just sort of come naturally. Um, OK, so last slide is just about what, you know, summarise what I've sort of said on the last slide, what makes a good data manager. So um, first and foremost, I think the ability to communicate clearly is really important. For example, using plain English where required and being just really clear and friendly when communicating with the site team members, especially so they can just feel like they can come to you about anything. It's really good to build up those strong relationships with sites. Um, as I said, ask questions. Um, definitely my top tip. Um, having a good knowledge of the trial and protocol really, really helps. Um, and then also time, having good time management, organisation and the ability to prioritise key tasks to make sure that the most important ones get done first. Um, also, expect the unexpected with that one <laughs> and always be ready. Um, having a close attention to detail, I think that applies across whatever DM role you're in. It's always really, that's a really good skill to have. Um, and the, as well as the ability to work independently and within teams, because we definitely have tasks that apply across both. Um, a really important one is to keep track of anything that you would like to raise during like, upcoming calls and meetings. I have like a list in OneNote where I track that sort of thing, just so it doesn't slip your mind. Um, and then last point, um, trackers are your friend. We love a tracker here at MRC CTU. Um, they're really good just to remind you, you know, to keep like track of important data items and also just to remind you when to like, um, chase sites for certain things. And yeah, we would recommend trackers. <laughs> so yeah, thank you um, for listening. Thanks. Thank you, Alex, for your uh, presentation and quite informative. Um, so as we enter into the panel discussion on Q and Q&A, be reminded uh, at the bottom there is a Q&A &A section that you can use to ask questions and they will be answered. Also worth noting is you can raise your hand in case you would want to ask your questions uh, uh, verbally and then you'll be unmuted and you'll be able to ask. So just from the panel discussion, I think the presenters, as you've all seen, they've raised the same important things. Depending on the number of, um, on the kind of study you're, uh, you, you're handling, whether it's a whether it's um, a survey or it's a longitudinal or it's a cross-section, whatever it is, you'll always come across the same same um, challenges. Um, uh, for example, most of them have highlighted access permission. Uh, how do you give access permission during uh, the study? Who, who do you give which permission? And, and usually we roll uh, roll that back to uh, the DOD. When you're starting the trial, always ask uh, your PIs or coordinators to give you the roles of delegation. From there, you can be able to tell 
who's the monitor, which rights you'll be able to give, who's who and which right and which rights you'll give. And then the other thing uh, the panelists have also given is uh, reporting uh, or progress. Usually this is very important for data management because as you do the progress reports, then the whole team is able to also follow through and see, yes, in the database you have 100 screened, 50 enrolled, uh, these failures, they're able to see that. And then you avoid at the end of the trial, um, people saying they have much more numbers and yet in the database you have less, so they have much more AEs and you have less. So those progress reports are usually good to help keep track so that you're at the same pace with the team. Another thing that the panelists have hi uh, highlighted is data integration and operability. Yes, we have uh, a number of um, uh, systems we all use, Open Clinica, Red Cup, uh, whatever it is. But the question is, what's the, what's the interoperability? Because at the end of the study, you want to be able to share this study, rather the, the, this data. Is it in a format that other users are going to be able to use? Um, usually, when, when the publication time comes, they'll ask you to deposit the data that you have used for the publication. Is this in a format that can be shareable with other people? That's worth noting right from the beginning uh, as you're designing your study. How is this data? How is this data going to be shareable? Is it going to be interoperable with other uh, with other data systems? And then the other question that came from the panelists was how to share personal identifiers. And this comes amidst uh, compliance with local regulations. Yes, depending on the area you're in, you, we have GDPR, we have Poppy Act for South Africa, we have we have different local regulations that are coming up uh, as a result of personal identifying data. And the question is, uh, how does this impact the way we've been handling data? Yes, at some point, we all used to have data sets that had both the clinical data and personal identifiers. Question is, how are you going to minimize? How are you going to make sure you're in compliance with the local regulations, with the international regulations, where, you're, where your funders or your sponsors are amidst all these? Because sometimes the SPIs will come and they tell you they need all this data. You should be able in a position to, are you going to have different data sets? One for personal identifiers, one for the clinical data, because all, at the end of the day, uh, the clinical teams need everything. They need the personal identifiers to be able to follow up the participants, but they also need the clinical data. So how are you going to be able to manage this data and make this uh, also being able to share it uh, and avoiding potential data breaches? Uh, then the other thing that also came from the panelists was standardization, and it also came up from both of the Q and A. How do we standardize this? How do we standardize the data? I think the most important thing is to pick on the number of standards that you can pick on. Some institutes uh, develop their own standards and say from now on, this is how we're going to be coding our data. If, uh, for example, it's a variable sex, this is how we are going to be having it. While some pick on international standard standardizations, for example, some, uh, if, it, if, if the data is going to be submitted for FDA, some most people are now picking on to CDISC as uh, an international standardization. So it, it all depends on what, what you are lying to, but the most important thing is to pick on to standardization, whether it's developed in-house or whether you're going, but the most important thing is going to be always to pick on one that's kind of international, because at the end of the day, you want this data that you've developed or that you've come up with to be shareable with other data sets. You don't want to have a data set that can't be used with other data sets. That's why we usually pick on to uh, different standardizations like CDISC so, so that you have the same naming convention and the data is shareable at the end of the day. The other thing that I picked from the panelists was communication and understanding of the protocol. As a good data manager, you should have an in-depth understanding of the protocol. You should have an in-depth understanding of the protocol from the bottom to the end, because it's what's going to devolve, it's what's going to drive your data management, it's what's going to, to drive your cleaning. You're going to be able from them to tell, okay, all my data sets have to be cleaned, but what do I give priority to? What does the protocol pull out as the main objective? What are the main questions? Where should I give put emphasis to? So you have to have an in-depth understanding of the protocol for you to be able to understand your data. And another thing that I came across from all the panelists was communication. You should be able to communicate with all, you have to understand your team. There are some people who want to be written to emails in the team, that's people who you have to go and talk to verbally. You should have, you should be able to tell how do you communicate within your teams. Yes, as data managers, sometimes when we raise queries, the people we are raising queries to may look at us as the police but you have to be able to bring it out to them that no, it's, it's not producing. We are trying to come up with the same thing. Uh, yes, uh, and the other thing that also came uh, uh, briefly up was the data, share, uh, data sharing agreements. These are usually done at the beginning of the study. 
Yeah, and then also trackers, keeping trackers. Um, for example, have you raised queries? Who have you raised the queries to? Or what are you supposed to be doing? And at what point in time? Sometimes we have things in our head, but then they stay there. But you have the whole documented tracker of what's where and who you've assigned it to, then it's easy to, to do some good data management. Yes, and then uh, also there was from the Q, as we move into the Q&A, there was a question that was asking about which systems to use. I think as data managers and, and working on various clinical trials, we're going to, we faced with a challenge where um, different people come in. Someone will tell you, no, use ODK. Someone will tell you, use Red Cup. Someone will tell you. I think as an institute, it, 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 it's up to you to pick on to one system and say one or two that we are going to develop expertise into this. Just pick on to one or two systems and say we are going to um, uh, develop expertise and all um, career development into this. Otherwise, you'll be pulled across. Sample will come with their own customized systems and you'll always be running up. Every protocol, you, you, you get a different system. You may never develop uh, uh, expertise into one system. Yes, so, um, Anne, would you want to pick on to some uh, Q&A? Yeah, so I think um, most of uh, my, my my question for me is all about the uh, the how I use the AI tool and uh, what about the uh, the concern of AI. So I think uh, first of all, I I I think AI is not um, reliable on on one hundred percent. Sure, uh, I I agree with that because uh, I think AI. It is like an, uh, an, an a human. It need time to learn and uh, process the data. Then it uh, can give the answer. But uh, we see that AI it has a, a huge uh, knowledge, uh, big, and quick uh, capacity to answer a, a, a mass uh, a, a big uh, search. So we can use this for very specific uh, case. For example, here I, as, I, as I talk in the, um, I said in my chat, so I use the 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 AI for very some 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 specific task. Like I can des describe very clearly my task from the like I need to uh, generate a uh, write a data management plan or something else or SOP in. Uh, in that case, so I provide some input parameter and it could uh, provide uh, for me a sketch, uh, a brief uh, data management plan after one minute. And from that, I can uh, continue to uh, to uh, uh, enhance, to, to, to improve the quality of the data management plan. So it already take, uh, help me to save uh, one or few or um, several days of my work. So and also in, in the AI, we can sometimes we can upload upload a file, a data file, or even a, a photo. And we can ask the AI to find the errors, the inconsistency, or uh, extract the data from the photo. So in that case, uh, some uh, another asked me about the data privacy. So in that case, I don't uh, upload the whole data with the, the ID of the patient, for example, but I only upload uh, like a, a part of data, like the uh, the, the occup uh, occupation, like the, the sex, gender, and need, uh, and I ask AI to uh, standardize, to find out the error in the, like in the sex or in uh, standardize the occupation, because occupation is always in the free text, I can ask the AI to standardize them. Or I can ask the AI to to find out uh, in 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 data cleaning cleaning and style and standardizing. I can ask the AI to to I list one thousand one thousand uh, drug names and I ask uh, what are antibiotic for example. It could uh, give me the answer. In that case, it uh, is not reliable one hundred percent, but still help our. Uh, pharmacies uh, a lot in the so reducing the time to check the you know, to check and find out the the the, the uh, what, what are antibiotic and what are the the uh, active agents so it save a lot of time for us or even uh, we can ask the AI to write down a script to do a very specific task in any programming language 
it's okay and it's, it uh, I, I in that task i see it uh, still better than generous than human so it is some uh, something uh, we uh, we can uh, use the ai for to 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 make our uh, life easier yeah Thank you, Alex, ma'am. Thank you. That's uh, quite nice. Um, yes, as we continue into the Q&A, um, there are, I can see, for example, there's a question that's asking, what are the key principles of effective data management? I think it depends um, on what you're looking at. But the most important thing, like we said, is one, thoroughly as a data manager, understanding the protocol inside out, and then planning from the very beginning. Yes, uh, usually as PIs and budget holders, they will want data management to begin uh, uh, after they have gotten all approvals, which is not right. Always uh, ask the PIs to give you a lead time before even uh, uh, starting the study, because you need to develop, for example, the CRFs. And when you look at developing the CRFs, for, uh, even away from the system, coming up with the word documents, you're going to need a combined team, the clinician, the lab person, the pharmacist. And you need some time to develop these and versioning them is another thing, or even before coming in with the final version. Then, like I said, also um, developing ex expertise in one or two systems. As uh, 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 And then the other thing is uh, a lot of testing and documented testing, because this will help you with coming in with a validation report. When you do uh, the testing before even the uh, study itself beginning, then you're minimizing the work that you're going to do uh, when the study has begun. And then, yes, documentation, which ties in with the question where someone asked uh, for uh, templates. Yes, the number of templates uh, you can pick from, but documentation, have a data management plan, have your do files up front before even beginning uh, the study. And then also worth noting is communication because usually it leads to a lot. If there is any breakdown in communication, then data management will be a little bit hard. And then also moving away from the desk as a data manager, getting to know your teams, your data collectors, the people they are collecting from, and, and understanding the whole process. Because when, when you understand the whole process where your data is coming in from, then it also help you appreciate uh, the data. And then, yes, that is pre, but also uh, also thinking about the end result. How, uh, how, is it that, uh, how is this data going to be shared? Then also you as a data manager, not uh, just looking at yourself as a data manager, but also you thinking about abstracts and any papers you write from the data course, then it helps you understand your data more. When you write from the paper, rather when you write from one study, the next study you'll plan for it even better because you, you'll have understood the challenges through. And then, yes, like I said, uh, at the beginning, you also think about the end. Where will this data be? Where will this data be uh, deposited at the publication? And then, yes, also as a data manager, like I said, looking at your career, how are you going to get onto those papers? Best thing is to be a first author. If you're not going to be a first author, fight for at least to be an author onto most of those papers. That was a whole pure understand. When you look at when you look at, at the different papers that your team is writing from your study, even if you haven't been the first author, it will help you also understand where the challenges are in the data and it will help you for the subsequent studies being able to manage them. Then the last thing I can give about effective data management is continuous training. If you have a team you're managing, do continuous trainings. You can do quarterly, look at the topics within the quarter, things that people have used in RedCap. What were the challenges? Someone has used the scheduling tool. It was disturbing him that have used an external module. Do, do, do a training for your team because it's not that whatever you started 10 years back is what you should be using now. Um, yes, uh, any of the panelists that would want to take on to any other question? Well, it looks like we're coming to the top of the hour. But if there is any burning question that one of the panelists would want, uh, we can take it on. Um, as we look through that, what noting is, um, you can please send in uh any topics that you would want for the next uh, uh webinar, and uh, people can well we've come to the top of the hour, but if people uh so we can push on for an extra fifteen minutes, cause looks like it's a hot topic for today, um. The other thing that I'm seeing that came up is about data governance. How do we manage data governance as uh, data managers? I think the most important thing is to understand that um, as a data manager, you're not the person responsible for your data. You're, you're responsible, but for sharing. It's always better to come up with access committees, always come up with access committees as, um, as an institute 
that will help because then the, as that access committee or the data sharing committee, it will be able to look at the different regulations. It will be able even to look, it will guide on, for example, at the protocol or, or at the, when, you, when the consortium is being developed, coming up with the data sharing agreements for the different sites. It helps a lot. So I think the most important thing under data governance is do not look at it as your full responsibility, but um, advocate for coming with, up with data sharing committees and that access uh, and that access uh, committees. Um, okay. Um, yeah, Alex, uh, would you want to come, um, help with anything? Yeah, I saw there was um one question. Um, well, actually, this person addressed two questions that they said were mainly for me, but anyone can answer. Um, they sort of said that I mentioned about the the reports that I prepare, and I were just asking what data I include in them, and then also how have they helped the study, and how the different sites, um, like how how it affected them. So I thought maybe I could comment on what's in it, and then maybe Mishek and Shingi could comment on how. How that's helped at the sites so um in terms of the reports that we prepare and then send to sites so we have um dms which is data management systems and they are the ones that actually pull these reports from the database they have like report specifications and then i get them and then i take them and i collate them and i filter them and then i put them into the reports that go to sites so I think there are like four tabs. So what the first one is queries. Um, so I filter for, yeah, I, there's the one report goes to each site. So I, I filter for the site and then I filter for any queries that are currently assigned to um, a site team member, because obviously some queries might be assigned back to someone at um, CTU and therefore it's sitting with us and not them. So yeah, that's the first tab. Second tab is like, we use an event and form status report, which is a standard report. And I filter it for any ECRFs that have, have like currently data entry started status. So like ECRFs that, that have started having data entered into them, but then they were never completed just to let site know that they either need completing or they need to just clear the ECRF. Uh, third tab is missed visits. So are just chasing for any visits that haven't been entered on the database and the time for entry has passed. Um, and then the final tab is missing forms. So again, any forms that have been indicated by the site that they will enter them, but then they haven't entered them yet and the deadline has passed. So yeah, that's sort of what we send to sites to help them with their data cleaning. Um, so yeah, I don't know if Mishek or Shingi, you wanted to comment on how that uh, helps you at site or affects you at site. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Um, usually our queries come in um, in three or four categories. Uh, the open data queries from the data uh, database, statistician queries, ad hoc queries that just prompt up, and statistician queries. So we, as I said um, in my presentation, that we make sure we stratify them according to <clears throat> to need and um, the agency. Uh, the routine ones, well, we can continue to look at them um, as time goes on, uh, but the IDMCs, which have got timelines, we, we, we action them as soon as possible. Um, we also, our communication with the um, coordinating site, uh, the, the sponsor of the funder, is key to uh, resolving queries and um, make sure we understand the queries uh, fully so that we also address them fully. Did, um, I, I think that answers your question, Alex. Thank you. And I don't know, Shingi, did you want to comment on how the reports help you at site? Okay, as 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 Shingi comes in, uh, as Shingi comes in with that, um, there was a very important question that was saying, can you give advice on how to manage uh, a team who have had uh, had time working in time frames, eager nurses 
who have other work, but also in data management. So yes, I, I think that's the same challenges, um, is the same challenges across all countries, across all studies. As a data manager, you're the one responsible for your for the quality of your data, for the completeness, accuracy, and timeliness. And as we move away from paper-based studies to real-time studies, we're now asking the clinicians to be entering the data. But at the same time, the clinicians will always look at this as secondary. For them, they'll look at um, the, the, the work they do on the participants as being primary. So in most cases, you will you will have a delayed data entry. You'll have the queries not being raised in real time. It's unless, it, so the best thing is one constant communication with them, constant communication with them, and then retraining them. When you raise queries, the most important thing is as you raise queries, you can have either monthly meetings where you kind of project, you may not project who has done the, the errors, but projecting the highest number of queries and retraining on those areas so that next time, if for example, today they were filling in, let's say, age wrongly, as you show, as you retrain them, then that will come, it, uh, the number of queries on that will come down. And then also having progress reports. When, when you give a progress report and the nursing, the participant says they have screened 100 people, and you're saying from the database you have 90 people, then that will also help the nurse, no, wait, I need to resolve these queries because the numbers they have are not telling mine, which is not right. So also when you give in those, when you give the um, the progress reports, it will also help the nurses or the clinician or the people who are collecting data to also uh, to, to give some time to, 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 to your study. And then also the other thing is you, you can have dedicated QC uh, teams uh, right after data collection, because uh, unfortunately with real-time data collection is once the participant moves away, uh, then the, some queries may not be able to be resolved there and then they may need for the next time when the participant comes. So which calls in for um, stringent um, uh, logic checks when you're designing your database and also having someone who can do kind of QCQA in real time, someone to be able to, because you have to develop your cleaning files looking at one, yes, the logic checks within the database, but also things that if you're, for example, having a paper-based consent, is someone looking at the whole study in real time, has this person been consented, the participant ID, is it on the consent form, is it what has been entered into the system? So those are some of the things, but also again, like I said, also understanding the uh, the clinic inside out, cause you may be raising queries and you may be saying the clinician is not resolving them, yet you just have to understand how are they, how is the clinic working? Do they have maybe some time at the end of the day or do they have Fridays where they are not scheduling participants? And then we can say that will be a cleaning, uh, that, that will be the cleaning day or a cleaning hour. So I think you have to kind of understand uh, the, 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 the clinic or where your data is coming in from. If it's coming in from the field, you may have to go and spend some time in the field to understand uh, how they are managing, how they are collecting the data. And then yes, uh, it will help you also uh, uh, with the query uh, raising and resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Um, um uh, any other um, others um will the panelists want to pick on to uh, any other questions? Um did you ever consider compiling an online workshop or what will you see? Um a question on archiving should that archiving be done uh just in one place or can uh, can we archive multiple locations, iggy cloud storage? and hard disk drives. So I think the most important thing is it, it's not where you're archiving your data, but I think a number of things. One, what does your protocol say? One, before even you look at whether you're going to archive um, on, onto the local servers or the cloud, what does the protocol say? And then secondly, um, what kind of data do you have? If, for example, I'm having personal identifiers, uh, where am I going to archive this? If it's going to be the cloud, what are the local regulations? If I'm going to use Google Drive, did the participant consent to that third party access to that data? Am I going to uh, archive, for example, personal identifiers uh, locally on the site? And then which data am I going to archive onto the cloud? If I'm going to use uh, external hard drives, uh, am I going to have this encrypted? Um, so it's. I think the most important thing is looking at what kind of data you want to archive, and then you can look at it how yes the biggest mistake as data managers we do have is having all our hopes 
in IT and saying, yes, we are a separate entity from IT. And then we'll look at the SOP for IT and IT says they are doing the backups. And yes, we, we put all our emphasis there. And then tomorrow, before you know it, ransomware hits and IT tells you, oh, sorry, uh, we've been hit. So the question is, as you, as a data manager, yes, your IT section is doing the backups, but also as a data manager, what are you doing as an extra step? How are you in control over the data you're managing? Because if, if if the data is hit, you'll all be hit. So, And then the other thing is upfront also knowing how long are you going to archive this data? For how long are you going to archive this data? The protocol could be saying it's an NDA, it could be saying it's going to be 25 years. And then you're putting it onto the cloud. Do you have the budget for that for the next 25 years? So one, what are the local regulations? What are the sponsor regulations? Uh, for how long are you going to archive the data? What's the budget like? And then you can move it from there. But the most important thing is always have that data protected. You can have it encrypted. Yes, in most cases now with GDPR, we're saying 256 encryption. But like, again, I say, it depends on the kind of data that you're going to have archived. Uh, what's the, what are the also regulations from the sponsors and the funders? Um, um yes um we will uh, you can the panelists are ready to pick on any questions different maps of what the things but most of the differences between those units um oh sorry yes there is a question here that's coming in um there is a question that's coming in for mostly multi-site studies and that's saying, how do you handle variances in units at different labs across the sites? I've noticed there is a difference between those units. So yes, 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 if, coordinate, if you are the coordinating center and you're the coordinating data manager, up front, at the very beginning, you have to take note of one, what is the protocol saying in terms of uh, in terms of what are you going to be using? Are you uh, what are you what are you going to be used for your re references? And then if it's going to be the labs, yes, you if it's it's if in most cases it's multi-country, you may find different labs have different ranges. So you have to agree that at the very beginning. You have to agree that at the very beginning. Are you going to pull? Are you going to use one reference? Or are you going to set up your database looking at the different ranges? Sometimes what sometimes we do is we may sometimes we decide to have the database with the minimum and the maximum, and then we raise we do the do files that are now site specific. If for example, they said for if this site said that their normal range is for example ten and fifteen, and the other one said theirs is for example their maximum is eighteen, you may raise that within uh, the do file. So it's all an understanding at the very beginning. You sit with your PI, then you agree. Are we going to, are we going to use uh, dates? What are we going to use? Are we going to use the lab uh, bit of it? And which lab are we? Do we have the sponsor specific ones, or should we look at this uh, site specific? In which case, if you're going to do site specific labs, then yes, you'll have to have a do file that looks at ranges for the different. Uh, for the different labs, in which case then uh, you'll have to use kind of your tracker to know I have site A, these are their ranges, site B, these are their ranges. If site A, their ranges go beyond this, then yes, I need to look out for an AE form and that kind of thing. So it's all understanding from uh, the very beginning, where you agree from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um. I wish we could move on uh, and on and on because I know it's a hot topic, but unfortunately, it looks like we have to wrap it up and call it a day. Um, uh, worth noting, yes. Worth noting is uh, we have resources um, uh, that are going to be projected where uh, the recordings will be put. So uh, the recording and materials and, pre and presentations will be shared on the MRC clinical trial unit. Uh, at UCL Capacity Strengthening Hub, and that's the link. Uh, would be nice if you could copy it or take a screenshot of it now before uh, everything closes, because uh, uh, the recordings will be put there. And yes, you can find the number of things that will be helpful for you as data managers. If you have any feedback on this session or any questions or suggestions regarding uh, the MRC City you are uh, at UCL Capacity Strengthening Hub, please get in touch with the team at that link below.
Like I said, again, you can either write it down or you can take a screenshot. Um, data management, it's all about networking. So would be worth if you could visit the sites there because the number of materials that you can, that will be useful to each of us. Thank you.